Okay, so um, welcome to the next session. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, our guest speaker for today, uh, from SOS Medical Mongolia. Uh, she comes from the sunny sport love of South Africa. Uh, in her school years, she spent much more time on the athletic track and hockey field than behind the books. Uh, sport and being part of the team was what made school fun for her. Um, she played hockey, ran the 100, 200, 400 uh, until her university days. Unfortunately, a chronic knee pain forced her to stop with that. Um, so she is an expert on these kind of issues. She has worked as a doctor in South Africa, United Kingdom, Canada, Sierra Leone, and since last year she's here in Mongolia. Uh, she has a passion for mother and child health and emergency medicine and loves traveling and experiencing new adventures. Um, I'm very happy she's here. Can I have a warm applause for Dr. Rosan? <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Um, thanks, everybody, for having me here with you. Um, I do think it's a wonderful initiative to, you know, to get, get coaches and, and teachers together and just you know, grow knowledge um, about not just what you actually do on the field, but how this impacts um, the athlete later in life and, and so on. Because what we need to remember is that little eight-year-old that starts playing soccer today needs to be 88 and pick up his grandchild and that body needs to be you know maintained so i just want to focus a bit on that so i'm not an expert by any means but i definitely have experience quite a bit of this. so um okay so we're going to speak about overuse injury today so overuse injury, I mean, you can all read there, but it's damage to a bone, a ligament, a tendon, um, or muscle due to repetitive stress without enough time for recovery. So it's two, two things. It's the stress that's repeated, and it's the not allowing it to recover. So the CDC says that about 5 million kids under 18 um, get sports-related injuries every year in the U.S. So I mean that's a vast number, and about half of that is overuse injuries. So what we find more, most common these days, overuse injuries. Well, you've got gainer stuff or the texture stuff. That's actually a form of overuse injury. You know, us facing all the time. Put your phone away for a week and feel the difference in your phone. Okay. So that's the same. So overuse is not just from sport. Very common way that we see is guys working with a jackhammer. They have movement all the time. Their joints, they don't last. They, you know, anything from um, hand bones, ligaments in the in the in the wrist, in the elbow. And often that's what we do to our, our, our um, athletes. It doesn't look as dramatic, but it's the same point. It's you know pressing the same place as you want to you know follow through to keep that ball. Causing, causing stress on the, on the ankle. Um, so we're just going to look a bit as to uh, what it is and how we can prevent. So we need to understand that children are much more at risk than an adult athlete for injuries. And the reason is that a child is not just a, a miniature adult. Mm -hmm. Everything in them is different. Their, their hormones, their um, physiology, their um, biology is different. Um, and they're ready to grow. So the bone density is different. They say that after a growth spurt, so we all know, you know, girls 12, 13, they suddenly grow and suddenly they're taller than the boys. Mm -hmm. Their bone density can be 60% less than what an adult woman is. So you can imagine how quickly those bones can break or bend or get damaged. Um, they've got muscle imbalance. You know, if you're only practicing one set of muscles all the time, they get stronger while the others get weaker. Um, and they're much more laxity, you know, their joints can, can be in much more positions than, than ours can. So all of that makes them more at risk for injury. So this is just to kind of illustrate the picture. So this is the x-ray of a right knee of a two-year-old. Can you see that there's no kneecap there? Oh, sorry. So this is actually small enough that I can show without the laser. So there's no kneecap. And you see there's a lot of space between those bones. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of space between the bones. And if you look, um, so this is the growth plate, and this is a piece that's still growing. Mm. So there's a, a lot of space there. And you can see it's not very stable. How much stability can, can it be in a knee that mm. it's mostly soft tissue? There's a bit of cartilage there. Um, if we then look at, so this is about a 13, 14 year old. Um, that's still the growth plate, so it's still growing. So if you get injuries to, to the growth plate, if you fracture that or you, you, you bend that constantly, it can actually make part of the growth plate not, um, not grow anymore. So that's what we often see. If a child fractures um, a near a wrist, that, that limb actually is shorter than the other leg. Or if it gets injured on the one side, it can get bow legs. So you know the one side grows and the other one doesn't. So we need to be aware that these are all very sensitive structures. Mm. Now, um, what age would you say, 13, 14? So that's about 13, 14, and those, they usually close around 18. Mm. So every joint in your body, you can actually get an atlas of growth, uh, of bone age. So, and that's how they use x-rays to determine how old children are. So from about six, seven years, some of your best bones uh, fuse, so then they don't grow anymore, but hips, knees, shoulders, 18 to 20 years old. So they are still, <coughs> still, still um, sensitive, you know, until the, the growth base has fused. So there you can see an adult, you can see the patella, so the, the um, kneecap is very visible. Uh, there's a, you know, the whole joint is complete this size to this size. You know, it's about a third there's about a third that's got bone, and then you know, the whole smooth area. So that's just why we need to be aware and be sensitive. And this is not just the knee. Every single bone in your body grows with, with growth plates. So if we look at the structures that get involved, they say for, for sports-related overuse injuries, the knees, the ankles, and then thirdly the back is the most common. But absolutely any area can, can get overused. Shoulders very often, swimmers or basketball players, volleyball players, that repeated movement can cause shoulder injuries. Um, now we're not all used to anatomy, but that's just an example to show you how an ankle looks. It is so complex. And if we look at what the definition is, it says bone, muscle, tendon, ligament. Add bursa, which is this blue bit, which is just like a soft tissue. Um, full of liquid. So absolutely any of those structures, if they get repeated stress on them, can, pull, can um, become an overuse injury. So these are, those are the muscles then. Ligaments is the things that put muscle onto bone. So that's the muscle and the ligament and it goes onto the bone. If you then strip all of that away, the tendons will then be which puts bone against bone. Mm -hmm. So if we look at every sport, obviously has different um, mechanisms of, of use. So obviously they will, will tend to have different um, injuries. If we look at, at soccer or football, I don't know what you call it here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, stress fractures of the lower leg is very common. Um, I'll go through, through more, them in more detail. Then patellar tendonitis, which is um, front of the knee here, or a jumper's knee, shin splints, Osprey slapper, uh, slapper disease is a bit less known, but it's where that ligament plants onto a piece of bone right here in front of your, uh, of your leg, lower leg, so onto the tibia. And then it actually pulls the piece of bone away. Very famous for slapper syndrome. And then the severe disease is very common from around 12 to, to 15 years old. And then Severs disease is then severe heel pain. It's also very much related to Osprey slapper syndrome. If we look at volleyball, again, there's the jumpers in here, but that in the a lot of shoulder injury, a lot of lower back, um, back injuries. And then basketball, the same, except the Achilles tendonitis, they get a lot as well, and carbon fasciitis as well. So if we look at a, a bit more detail into some of these, so I, it's important that we remember that uh, overuse injury is not an acute injury. So in medicine, when we say acute, it means it's sudden. So if 
you are playing soccer and somebody kicks you in your shin and he breaks, that's an acute injury. You know you got injured. This is not something that happened. It's not an injury. You didn't know somebody didn't kick you, you didn't you know sprain your ankle, he just starts having pain. So what happens is that and so it's very difficult to put an exact time on this, but it will be something like today I notice it, tomorrow it's still there, maybe by five, six days it's still there. It's in one spot. It's not I'm unfit, I went running and my whole body is you know. It's the one spot, the same place, because it's a structure that got injured. So if we look at what happens with uh, stress fractures, it's repeated pressure on the on the lower lower leg, and you actually see there, it's like little fractures. So you do an x-ray, you don't see anything, because it's not the bone that's broken, but it's like almost like a, a shell of an egg. If you just push it, then it cracks a little bit. So the bone starts cracking, and if you do an MRI, is when you will, will notice that. So, we then go on to the patellotendinitis. So that is the, the, the patella tendon is the one in front of your, your kneecap here. So it goes over your, goes from your hamstrings, over your patella, so over the kneecap, and then plants in onto the tibia, which is the lower leg. And that is what you need to do this movement, so the front movement. So kicking, walking, running, that's, that's what you want to do. So you keep on overusing that, or, or stressing that ligament. It eventually starts little bleeds, little tears, gets inflammation, and it just then gets worse and worse from there. Mm -hmm. So you can then get weakness and um, yeah. So we'll go a bit into more about recognizing and what to do. And this I'm sure all of you have seen your athletes. They go running and suddenly you stand and you hold like that. So um, that is shin splint. Mm -hmm. It's one of the few things which you don't actually know the mechanism of. So it's pain in the lower, um, lower two thirds of, thirds of, the, of the, the shins, so the, the, the lower leg. Initially they thought it might be, be microfractures, but since we now have MRIs, we can look and it's not microfractures. But it's pain and it's inflammation and it's, and it's very, very painful and de debilitating. We often find it when athletes um, change the intensity of their they practice, mm. or if they change the surface. Mm. So if you used to running on grass, you go out to tartan, or like we were running on ground mm. and went onto grass, and suddenly that, that's quite severe pain. Uh, the military guys also get that, you know, that repeated marching. Mm. In shoulder cuff injuries, um, so it's what they call above head sport, so any of those, even tennis. Um, and it's repeated strains on the ligaments, so either in the shoulder or in the elbow, um, and it then again causes inflammation, it causes micro tears, it can cause, there's a sheath that the muscle runs into, that sheath becomes stiff, um, and that can really cause permanent disability. So it's something that needs to be sorted out when a child is young, and not have the, you know, 30 year old, not able to come his, um, his own hair. So I'm going to just take it. Simple water here. So, so luckily the, the guys that know what they do with um, sports medicine has divided this into four categories. And it's actually amazing how it fits into them so easily. So firstly, it will be a pain. So if you've got overuse injury stage one, you'll have a pain after you have physical activity. So you'll be playing, you'll be fine, and an hour later you're sitting at home and yo, this knee is really, you know, you feel it. Um, or that piece of the shoulder. But it's specifically one spot. It's not the body. It's not unfit or anything like that. It's a definite injury. So if, you know, day four or day five, the same, the same pain after, um, after race, basically, then that's probably a stage, stage one overuse injury already. We then see a stage two where you have pain during activity, but it's not so severe that you need to change your activity. So you're still, it's not restricting your play. 
So your athlete is feeling it when he's participating, but you don't see it. You know, as a coach, you don't notice it because they don't say, and you don't. You know, they're still performing at at the, uh, the usual level. Then at the third stage is where um, it it's present during activity only, but it restricts play. So you'll see, you know, your guy gets a bit slower to get into his position or, you know, swimming is a little bit slower, um, turning and things like that. And then the fourth stage is then where you have chronic pain. Um, it lasts even when you rest. So you don't want to clearly restrict in your activity, but when you get home, it's, it's pain all the time. Whether you're sleeping, whether you're awake, it's, it's there. Obviously, it can be different degrees, but um, yeah, it's, it's persistent. So what you do is, firstly, we need to recognize it. And that's why things like this is good that we are aware of it. Um, so then, if we have the first stage, um, usually, so if it's only painful after injury, after you have activity, you can continue with your exercises as long as it doesn't get worse. So what we usually say is, elevate it, put some ice on it, and keep an eye on it. But obviously if it gets worse, it then goes into stage, stage two. So ice and elevation is generally good. Stage two, you can continue, so it doesn't restrict pain. You've got pain, but it doesn't restrict pain. So you can continue with your training as long as it's pain-free. So you will sometimes see, especially athletes, you know, can run five kilometers, but by six, kilometer six, the pain really kicks in. So then you restrict to do that. Or, you know, on the field, you can notice if you do a certain movement, say, you know, kicking with the left leg, it's painful. So kick with the right leg, that kind of thing. Stage, uh, so for that, you also do a, um, ice and elevate. And then non steroidal anti inflammatories is good and useful. But it should only be used under the supervision of a parent or a medical person. Um, and that's not part of the topic, but I do think it's very important, you know, to um, make sure that coaches and teachers should not be handling medication. Right. It's to protect yourself, it's to protect your athletes, just separate it completely. Okay. But really at this stage, if it's that painful that you need to start taking medication, it's probably a good time to, to seek help. So either go straight to a physiotherapist or biomedicist. Um, or to a, to a medical doctor. So stage three is now where you remember you've got pain that's actually restricting your play. So you, you need to stop training. You can possibly do some cross training, so in a completely different way, maybe go into the swimming pool or something like that, but definitely only under supervision of a medical team. So that's definitely the time. If, you're, if your play is restricted, you need to see a physiotherapist or a doctor or both. And the doctor will usually refer you to the show. Um, so, like I said, some cross training might be needed, uh, possible. In stage four, you might need to change your activities of daily living. So, it's not just that you can't train, you've got chronic pain, you might need to adjust what you do. How you walk up the stairs, what you do here and there. So, uh, and that definitely needs to be under the care of a, of a doctor and a physiotherapist. So, what we will do as a medical team, so usually you can choose to either, if, if you've been to a physiotherapist, often they will just go straight there, book, book in with the physiotherapist. Um, sometimes they will say, well look, rather go see the doctor because maybe some investigations is needed. Um, but it's, it's a team thing really. You know, no doctor can, can manage a sport injury without a physio and, and often the physio needs the doctor as well. So we'll do a clinical examination. So see, you know, is there weakness, is there redness, is there swelling, things like that. Um, and then sometimes we'll need to do some special investigations, which will either be x-rays or ultrasound or CD or MRI. Um, and that's to see the actual structure. So if you're suspecting a stress fracture, that needs an MRI. Mm -hmm. If it's a tendonitis, often you do an ultrasound just to exclude the tear and then you can, can continue. Um, and then physiotherapists and bi or biotherapists will be very involved. They will also evaluate, they will do treatment, which you know, I think most of you will know is a whole um, variety of treatment that the physiotherapists can do, do. It will always involve the home program and um, education. Because if you keep on doing the same thing, the results are going to be the same. So you need to change something. 
They also will not might make use of spins, or strappings, or like kinetic tape or dynamic tape um, for support equipment, um, like maybe a wrist splint or something like that. And then short-term anti-inflammatory use is, will usually be prescribed. If we talk short-term, it's usually about up to 10 days. Because what the anti-inflammatory does, it, it act actively goes against the inflammation that is occurring in that injury. So then it's treatment, it's not just pain relief. So it's kind of, we need to know why we are taking medication. But it's very important that it's only short-term. So that's why I added this slide. So it's really important that we need to realize that the, the treatment for an overuse injury is rest and resolving the, the issue and not pain here. Um, and I think most of you have seen or read somewhere where even a, a famous sports star has gone over the edge and become addicted to, to drugs because of the injury. Because it was just too sore, so I took something stronger and stronger and, and so on. And that's again, like I said, you know, coaches and teachers, stay away from medication. If you think your, your student needs or your athlete needs medication, talk to the parent and, and get into a medical um, facility. Um, also important, this can sometimes be the start of an addiction. So you know your, you know your athletes. If you see they start behaving differently, you know, make sure it's not maybe some of this drug use or even over the counter use that should not be happening. Also, please, no child should be getting an injection for painkillers to go to go participate. All right. We all know, I don't want to let the team down and it's my last chance, it's my last year. We all know that story. But that body needs to become 18 and still needs to function. So we don't want to cause harm right there. So talk to your, your students, you know, let them understand that it's, it's a bigger picture than just this competition that's, that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so please, don't, this thing of, you go to the physio Monday to Friday and you're in pain every day, just so that on Saturday you can, can participate. That's, that's harmful. Yeah. So, so all in all, this is prevention is better than cure. It's basically what it boils down to. So recognizing it, this is exactly what you guys are doing here. You know, it's just getting the knowledge, knowing that this is this could be it. You know, if you know your athlete didn't get an injury, he didn't fall, he didn't weren't hit, he didn't sprain his ankle, but you can notice look, there's a limb every now and again, or it just doesn't feel, you know, look that well. Think about overuse injury. And then communication. It's very important that you need to have an open communication with your athletes. They need to know that they can come tell you, look, I'm not feeling good. Or, it's, you know, the pain is there. Um, and don't just, oh, um, just running or walking off. You know, we all know that one, walking off. Yeah. Um, or you just unfit. You know, that's often not the case. Um, so, have an open communication. Let them be able to tell you that it's pain. And, and don't push you know, too hard to, to go through the pain, but rather deal with the, with the underlying problem. So a few things that the, the experts advise is warm up and cool down. And I know every coach knows this, and every athlete hates, hates it. So yeah, so you know, do the stretches before and do the stretches afterwards. Um, that is very, very important, especially with the tendonitis. You know. um, and start slow. So they, they advise that for, for young, so for children, so for under 18s, that you should not increase your intensity by more than 10%. Which for some sports is almost impossible to, how, how much is 10% more in basketball? Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Running is easy, you know, it's this, this, this. But just basically don't throw them in the deep end and expect them to, to be fine. Rather, you know, build up slowly. <coughs> then do things right, um, the right technique, you know, that's, that's why he's a coach. Um, sometimes, you know, the kid's got a, a funny throw and you think, well, you know, it's a bit unconventional, but it's effective, but that's probably going to cause harm in the end. So it's the reason why there's a specific technique in doing something. So, you know, try and, and get the right technique and then use the right equipment, the right shoes, the right surface to, to train on, all of that makes a difference. Um, yeah, so coach, coaching inter interventions is really, really important there. 
and mix it up so do cross training you know don't always every day do the same thing it's the same strain on every muscle and, and bow the same way so do different things on different surfaces and then they also advise that you do um, conditioning training for the whole body you know so often it's just well it's now this season so we're practicing this but rather maybe have an off season and getting you know aerobics in there and getting um, general overall muscle strengthening so um, if we go back to our, our definition it was overuse injury is damage to any of those structures due to repetitive stress without enough time to heal so which is pretty much obvious then that the actual treatment is to stop that unplug it and rest and we all know that that's very very difficult to do but the experts advise that a kid uh, should not specialize in any one sport until they be puberty there's a few exceptions gymnastics being one of them because by 12 13 they would this sometimes on their, on their prime but most of most team sports don't let them specialize in one sport only let them do one sport per season only and preferably only one team per per sport so not i'm playing at the school and then i'm playing at this club and i'm playing socially there as well because it just it's the same stressors that they doing every time recovery time is very important um they say at least one to two days every week with no activity doesn't mean to sit and watch tv but not active sporting activity um, then they also advise and i think covid did a lot of kids a lot of good this year it's two to three months per year no, no, no physical activity also no sport activity so it doesn't need to be con continuous so it can be six weeks here two weeks there but this you know school holiday and do sport the whole school holiday you know that, that puts a lot of strain on them so it's just important to to remember that they also need rest we know athletes and enjoy it. they enjoy this sport it's called play for a reason but sometimes it just gets too much and you need to also know that your body needs the rest so take the time to rest and that's not just only important for overuse injury but also for for burnout we know a lot of kids they are brilliant um, sportsmen until they're 17 18 21 they don't want to get close to you so you know that's part of it needs to be remain play it needs to remain something nice to do um, and then for the younger kids it says don't spend more hours per week playing an active sport than what the kid is old so 10 year old should not be more than should not be on the sports field for more than 10 hours so that's a fairly um, easy way to go so there's a few articles there there's a few really good articles articles some videos as well especially with orthopods they are worldwide people are extremely worried about the increase in overuse injuries and, it, and it's getting younger and younger 10 year old 12 year old already sitting with you know chronic knee pain chronic shoulder pain because they are just you know their bodies are just not ready and we know it's not parents facing them and coaches facing them with themselves also just pressurizing them so I think we just need to be aware of it and, and try to avoid it. Okay, that's what I have to say. Is there any questions? Uh, I don't know if it's really a question or kind of an observation. Um, and I, I'm just wondering if you have any feedback. As far as dealing with students going to the doctors here in Mongolia, and uh, their foot's hurting, and we saw, okay, it can be Achilles tendonitis or plantar fasciitis or any of the itises. Um, and they go to the doctor, the doctor says, yep, your foot hurts. Uh, the kids come back, hey, what's wrong with your foot? So I've got a little bit of knowledge, how can I help you through this? Yeah. Um, my foot's broken. Yeah. It's, it's, that's a kind of a translation yes. problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so I, guess I might be a bit biased there because obviously I'm, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm a doctor and I think it, it, it's important to go to a, a well-established facility and with people with knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. it's one thing to have a GP that was trying to look after you've got a cold and you've got a tonsils, but, you know, to also know more detail. And it's important that we don't, we don't like to say the foot is broken, that just means be sore. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a concern. So I would suggest that they rather go to a facility that's preferably linked to a 
do a visual therapy as well. Yeah. Like advertising. <laughs> but <laughs> but like we've got you know we've got uh, what we call rehabilitation and, and yeah. um, um, what, traditional medicine. medicine. So it's rehabilitation doctors. So you know it's visual therapist that is well trained, they've got the knowledge, they you know they're working with mm -hmm. a lot of people all the time. And they can help identify and change behavior and change activity. So I think that's very important. I'm kind of concerned about any doctor that tells the athlete your foot is broken, hurt, whatever, and not refer on. Yeah. Because a doctor cannot really treat a, a muscle injury, you cannot treat a tendonitis. You know, we can fix a broken bone, we can put a cast on it. But when that cast comes off in the army stiff, the doctor is not the one that makes it. My wife. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the rehabilitation team, so it's a physiotherapist. So I do think you know it's kind of important that we we get gay kids to to get to physiotherapist, and because that's also again going to prevent it from happening again. Because now he's got tendonitis, and now he rested for two weeks, three weeks, and he's fine. But if your your technique doesn't change, if your stretching of your muscles doesn't change. You know, it's just going to happen again, and that's where the physiotherapists are so important because you know they they strengthen the correct muscles because often it's an imbalance in your in your muscles as well mm -hmm. that can um, you know that can uh, precipitate these things. So a physiotherapist is a crucial. A physiotherapist or biokinetics. I'm not mean the biokinetics system. You mean I'm sure there is some around, but um, but yeah, that should be really a a core part of, of managing yeah, yeah. a athlete. Yeah. Yeah. So we forgot to introduce Ayuna Sophie's here. She's our clinic manager from Source Medica. Mm -hmm. So she's probably a good person to talk to about, you know, maybe getting physiotherapists involved you know, with your teams or something like that, you know. Um, yeah, a little bit off topic, you know, we've been talking about it, just put there some athletic director here in the room too, mm -hmm. uh, about when we have an event, yes. what would you uh, say is good, like do we have one nurse per how many kids, what kind of material do we have, what do you guys suggest as a, if, if we have a big event, we have five schools, we have yeah. ten teams coming in, yeah. what do you suggest that we have prepared as a first aid? I think it, it depends very much on what the sport is, what the age of age group mm -hmm. is and so on. So I think it will be very much individualized, mm -hmm. um, but obviously always a minimum of, of one nurse with, with you know, basic um, first aid equipment. Um, and then having some of your backup, so ambulance on backup and, 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 and so on. So, you know, it depends. It's a, it's a high risk injury. The doctor might be a good plan. So, a physiotherapist um, running volleyball, for example, is a good, good time to have a physiotherapist on hand, you know, to help with strapping of, of, of shoulders and elbows and things like that. So, I think a good plan would maybe be if you, if you have an event and you need advice, just my email address is on the presentation. Maybe just email and say what you suggest, and you know we can have a talk and, and see what is good. Thank you. Okay. Um, <coughs> resistance training. Yes. Wait. Uh, resistance training, lifting, weight workout. How do you, uh, particularly for teenagers? Yeah. Um, I know we've done it since middle school, coming from Texas. Yeah. <laughs> but um, what is your, will it strengthen, I mean obviously it's going to strengthen the muscles, but what about the overuse? Yeah, that, they, that's always the risk, and I think that's often where the physiotherapist is great in, in assessing the individual, because we need, also need to remember, once puberty hits, you cannot compare two kids. You know, especially 12 year olds. One is not in puberty, one is this tall and this big, and his muscles is probably all right. So I think, you know, it's very much an individualized thing. But in general, the rule is always that, you know, not, not to, nothing should be causing pain. Right. So anything that is too strenuous and you can see is causing pain is a, is a definite no. But it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a controversial topic. You know, about what age to start really with, with weight lifting. Obviously, you know, small weights and the repetitive that we know is just small bit building, you know, strength, but um, proper muscle building is, well, that's quite a controversial thing. And I would say really get the fissures and the bike and the system off. That's not really a. I'm, I'm not what. Get, get the fissure therapist or bike and the system involved. It's not really a, a, a medical field. I don't want to <laughs> step into <laughs> <Okay>. that one. <laughs> 
Cramping. So cramping often has got to do with, with uh, if it's repeat, repeated. So you're sleeping and you're having cramps, you know, all the time, or always when you will do one movement, special one, lifting your your big toe and, and it cramps. Um, calcium and magnesium um, de deficits is quite common. We need to remember in UV, vitamin D is a major problem, and vitamin D controls your calcium um, metabolism. So I would really suggest that any person living in UV should be, or in Mongolia should be on a vitamin D supplement, and WHO overgreets, so I don't think we're thinking. Um, so, yeah, so definitely, so often it's just taking, taking uh, a good magnesium and calcium supplement, but stretching also, you know, if, if, um, if muscles are stretched properly um, in a regular way, uh, often the cramping disappears. So warm up and cool down again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You organized the event, or you've been organized, didn't you? Uh, so, from International SAS, so with Source Medica and International SAS, we work very closely together. So, they put a little package together for you. A few medical stuff. You uh, can check it out and put your own things in, or keep this safe for, for your sports activities. But enjoy it. Thanks very much. And uh, we want to thank you, Luzan, for coming here today. Spend, spend some time with us. Get the crew, get the crew traffic here. Uh, we have a little present for you from the International School of Development.